Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Conversations with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Kevin, and I am pleased to be here with someone who I'm once again meeting for the first time. I love this dynamic where I get to like, we'll exchange emails and we'll get things scheduled, and then I get to meet someone new and talk to them about what they're most passionate about. It's I, I know I say it a lot, really gets me out of bed in the morning, keeps me up all day and energized. So today I get to introduce you to Craig Martin. Uh, Craig is a serial entrepreneur, business coach slash consultant, and I love this phrase, recovering advertising executive, <laughs> guiding entrepreneurs to build seven plus figure businesses and exit to freedom for the past two decades. These days, he's on a mission to help one million entrepreneurs to make a real impact on our world. And we're going to get to talk about that today. Craig, thank you for being here. I'm I'm pleased to meet you. <laughs> thank you for having me. Yeah. Let's uh let's go back to the beginning. Not all the way back. Not like I was born. You know, we don't have to. Look. We can go back that far if you'd like. But I'm always fascinated by how people get their start as a coach. I often, sometimes, well, often, sometimes, <laughs> I often refer to it as uh, the superhero origin story. I feel like every coach kind of has that moment where like a key mentor came in and sort of told them that maybe something that maybe coaching would be right for them, or that coaching is something they're already doing. They just didn't have the word for it. Um, so how did you get your, how'd you get your, your powers as a coach? How'd you get your start as a coach? Well, I had some pretty genius mentors, coaches in my early days, but, uh, the decision came after I made two decisions in my agency. And one of them led to now being a full-time coach. Um, the first was me stop using stop doing like brainstorm sessions hmm. um because i i think it wasn't delivering the full impact because of you know normally people pull from the strongest person in the in the room so hmm. i decided uh, okay we're not going to do this no more we're going to give everyone an opportunity to develop their own concept their own ideas and then we will merge them together and see the result that we get from that hmm. the result from that was great hmm. then i decided that i'm not going to work from creative briefs no more hmm. <laughs> <laughs> now you know those two things are the bedrock of an agency that's true <laughs> and yet yeah, well any creative director agency owner can tell you that 90 percent of the creative brief that you normally get kind of pretty hard to translate yeah <laughs> so i decided that okay this is not really giving me all the detail the information that i need to translate back to what needs to be done so i decided okay well we're going to start solving problem and a conversation basis there was a, some resistance in the early days. Um, mm -hmm. Eventually, some clients came around, and then it didn't take long for them to start reaching out to me for non-advertising consultation <laughs> because mm -hmm. now the covers start getting lifted and they're getting a deeper look in their business through those mm -hmm. conversations because, you know, creative briefs, most of them were created based on perceptions. They were invalidated. Mm -hmm. Mm. So that eventually started the whole pivot into the coaching consulting space. And then clients now start pushing me like, I think you should look into this more seriously. <laughs> and eventually after almost 17 years running the agency, I finally decided to pivot out into the coaching consulting space. I really, I, I, I really do love that story. I had some, had some experience at an ad agency when I was much younger and I, there were things I liked about it and things I didn't and things that I've taken with me into my career that I have currently. Um, but one thing, well, two things, one, I love that you, like one of your real strong motivating factors was you really were, you realized and it bothered you that you weren't able to have the kind of impact you wanted to have. You kept you kept noticing that there were these significant limiters or, you know, a, a muting of voices and just a difficulty of actually connecting with and serving your clients and having and helping to generate the kind of impact that you want. And you didn't just sit there with that discontent. You were like, I need to do something about this. Things need to change. And then you started going about changing it. And I love that 
you just found your way to coaching because it became the answer to your question. But you went out, you, you began, you didn't wait until the, hey, maybe you should try coaching kind of came to you out of the blue, like a lightning strike. You started, you got, you got to work and you started making some changes. I just, I, I love how that exemplifies coaching value so beautifully. Um, and I also really, really, really love the way that you just very cleanly laid out how, how brainstorming sessions and things like that can be an inhibitor, can be a limiter of creativity and can really silence or at least quiet a lot of other voices. Because like you said, like you pointed out, like that in, in those brainstormy type sessions, the loudest voice or the strongest voice or the more, the voice that is most adept to that particular kind of environment gets more weight, regardless of the value of their ideas or their thoughts or the potential effectiveness or impact of what they might be saying or what they might be thinking and putting out there. And yeah, I, I love that you were just like, no, this is not, this, this can't be, we got to do something different. This needs to be different. We need other voices because I know that they're there. They come out in different environments. Let's create that space and let people speak into it and see what comes out. And I'm, I'm completely unsurprised that what came out was a successful diversity of voices generating better ideas and more impact. That's like, you see it and it makes so much sense. Yep. It seems so simple, but it's, that's it a hard works. decision to make. <laughs> I like to disrupt the flow of things sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's in my nature. Your right now, but you are you're you're smiling big, very very big <laughs> smile. <and> that's oh. <laughs> yeah. I like to disrupt things sometimes. Um, um, things might be going good, but it might be going too orderly. Mm. So mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I will create a little disruption just to you know motivate a situation sometimes and sometimes that disruption serves to prove the strength of the order where it's just like if if you know if, if there's a certain kind of order or a way things are done and you poke a poke a little disruption in there poke a little change introduce a little yeah we little all need to disrupt ourselves at some point yeah yeah you test the resiliency and resiliency that's if it's if something is vulnerable or weak or very easily disrupted that's a good sign that there's some changes that need to be made there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love this. Yeah. This is great. So let's, <laughs> I want to, I want to move things up into the present now and talk a little bit about, we'll talk a lot about what your coaching practice looks like today. And I usually ask this question as kind of like a two-parter. Um, basically it boils down to who do you coach and how do you coach them? The who being generally like if you have a specific focus where you really like lock in with certain like, you know, for example, executives of a certain level or people in certain industries or careers that are trying to move from one area to another or, you know, things like that. Maybe it's just like certain types of people or certain people in certain industries or places in their career or their lives. And the how do you coach them is basically the whole spectrum of coaching, whether you focus on your one to one clients, uh, you have group coaching or masterminds that you run or help to guide. Um, whether you have coursework or you do keynote speaking, maybe you've written or are writing a book or two or 10 or <laughs> however it is. Um, so but yeah, basically the whole gamut, who do you coach and how do you coach them? So my main focus is on entrepreneurs that are really, you know, as stated, trying to grow a business to a seven plus figure. Um, it may not be your goal currently, but if you're at the stage that, okay, I feel and I need to move to, this level mm. then that's my focal group um you know my, my main focus is on growth mm. in terms of uh the methodologies i i try not to i use a lot of frameworks and i use some of the you know common available frameworks but I try not to use the, I would say, the fast food method, the, the, the happy meal method of coaching. Uh, okay, well I have a seven step, prof, step process that I use across the board. I try to develop framework thinking. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So that allows me to take, so I, I intake with a, a client. I do my assessment and then I can pick the parts, elements mm -hmm. from each framework to design a framework to solve that problem for that client. Hmm. 
so I some of the common available you know frameworks that I I have a whole bunch of them that I rearrange to <laughs> suit my needs. I, this doesn't serve me. I take it out. I put what I need in it, and so I have a whole lot now that I develop for me. That's and really the way I to do pick, it. Yeah, I pick elements to serve the need of the client and not just have like a five step or seven step process that I just spread out across the board. You know, that it's like you're walking into a fast food restaurant and, you know, they just hand you a meal and you go out and, you know, <laughs> not everyone that goes in the restaurant going to need everything that is in that meal. <laughs> exactly. That's such a great, that's such a great point. I love, and this is really like, I, I feel like this is very, this just shines a big spotlight on the real value of a coach. It's because these frameworks are so they're they're there's the frameworks are a dime a dozen. They're they're relatively readily available. There's a ton of yeah. them. There's five step to seven step to twenty seven step, the thirty day, the six month, the twelve month, the what all these different methodologies and frameworks. And they've worked for some people, but really, I think where people will get get lost or get maybe get stuck in the mud is they'll just apply the framework without any real critical thinking or without any guidance. They'll just throw it on top of their business or their lives and execute on it without really giving Low it validity. more thought. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And so a, a real, a, a, a really good coach, which it sounds like you are, understands that you pick, you understand the frameworks, you comprehend why they work the way they work, why they exist in the first place. They don't become frameworks unless they have some level of effectiveness. You see what's there and then you look at your client. And you look at what they need and where they're at. And you're like, you know what? This part's going to be perfect for them. But the rest of this stuff, they're just not, that's not their industry. That's not their goal. That's not their desire. That's not their impact. That's not their scale, whatever the reason. And so you kind of brush that aside and you bring that good, that good piece over. And you look at the other frameworks and you're like, so I'm very familiar with this one and this one and that one. I could see these two parts being very, like, I could see these two really working. So you bring them in and you attach them. I'm, in my head, I've got, there's just like this mad scientist going on where you're in the lab. And you're building these custom frameworks, almost like a tailored suit or tailored clothing, where it's just like, you know, the measurements of your client yeah. and you're going to get them something that fits them like a glove. It's going to feel, it's going to make them feel like a million bucks, literally, eventually. Yeah. <laughs> After solving problems for two decades, <laughs> you, you know, your wins, your losses, they, they do teach you valuable lessons and, you know, give you new perspective of looking at things, you know, it takes you from that linear space and puts you in, give you the worldview. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The world is not, the world is not a framework based place. The world is chaotic and, and adaptive yeah. and it's always moving and always changing. It's, it's, and that's a, a very that's a agile environment. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's the way it should be. That's, that's, that's actually a feature, not a bug. And that's something to embrace and not try and deny or keep out. And that's, yeah, again, that's all, where coaches all... are so valuable. We're all different. And mm -hmm. that's something that um, needs to be embraced and applied into the, the practices of mentorship, coaching, mm. you know, um, in terms of the stuff. Well, I haven't written a book yet. <laughs> <laughs> yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I recently launch a group coaching um Ooh. platform excellent so that's yeah that's um that's acclimated minds so that's again targeting for uh entrepreneurs that are you know looking to network and you know build your business up with a group of like-minded people focusing and achieving their their end goal hmm there's something I like, I've, 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 well, I've gotten to speak to hundreds of coaches now at this point, which is still like, it's kind of heady to me. And so I have like, whenever, whenever I'm hearing someone talk about like their new program or whatever it is, I'm always like, oh yeah, I remember when so-and-so or these like four or five people, when they first started getting into group coaching and what they, how they, how they spoke about it. And I love how, how uh, amplified or how, how you can amplify your impact in a group coaching environment, because that transition from like doing, working primarily one-to-one -one, to kind of moving into group coaching, it's it's still coaching and it still has a lot of the same power and it's still imbued yeah. with your with your coaching principles and your passions. But there's a there's a slight difference to it. And then when when you have it right and you're guiding a group and they're almost coaching each other at the same time as they're being coached by you, it's really uh, magical is a word that gets tossed out there a lot. But there's just there's there's something really just inspiring about it to watch it happen. 
Yeah. The key thing I think is to understand people's process. You know, it's mm. it's easy to try to teach the way you teach. Mm. It's better to understand how people learn, mm. how they receive, how they organize, how they process information. Mm -hmm. That's I, man, that's a that's something I think about a lot, and it's a lesson that I have to I have to learn on a regular basis, especially as someone who like hosts a podcast and like talks a lot and has to communicate. I have to communicate myself a lot. That it's still the number one job is for me to understand not what I'm saying but how it's being heard, how it's being received, and and how much more of an impact I can have if I take the time and the energy and the focus to consider that and to leave open the possibility of that, to leave open where that might go. And then to think about that, like I often think about our little internal team dynamics here at, here at Boxer and how, how much I've learned the ways in which people best process information and how I how I speak differently to them in ways that are that are considered, and how I continually evolve how I speak to someone, how I communicate to someone, and it's it's I I've, I find it to be endlessly fascinating. I mean, I say endlessly fascinating. Like I'll I'll enjoy this for the rest of my life, just like thinking about the way human beings interact and how they listen and how I touch them and they touch me and all this stuff personally, professionally across the board. And I just I love I love the way that you are helping that to happen for an area for, for like a type of person because entrepreneurship can be a very how do i say this it could be very isolating it could be it could be it could be a little bit lonely it, you can feel like you're on your own like private journey and it's good to know it's good to have someone there to guide you and also to show you it's like there are they're on their own journeys it's it's you're you're doing your thing and you're doing it well but there's still there are, there's a whole there's a, a plethora of people out there who understand who on, on a base level where you're at, what you're going through and how you're developing. And then maybe they're a little bit behind you on their journey comparatively or a little bit ahead and they have, they can have insights to offer you that you might not get on your own. And it's just, I think it's really important work. Yeah. If you look at, um, say a sport recruiter, hmm. they go out and they look for people that have a magic that needs to be, hmm thrown out in the world hmm. and they develop so they, they get that person and then they take that person to a coach a coach develop that person you're not instilling something in someone you're bringing out what's already in that person mm. mm -hmm. ah, couldn't have said it better myself that's I'm looking at, I'm doing that thing where I'm looking up at the clock and I'm like, man, I want to, I just want to keep talking <laughs> because we're, we're tapping well. into those deep pools that I love. It's like, it's, it's the real stuff, but I should, I should wrap things up here, but I do want to ask you another little two-part question before I let you go, because I want people to be able to find you and learn more about you and connect with you. So where can people find out more about you? What's the best place for them to go to learn more about who you are, what you do, what you're up to now and coming up in the future? And also, what's the best way for people to connect with you if they want to start a conversation and maybe start a relationship? Um, I'm on LinkedIn. I am just <laughs> getting active on social media after being hmm. beaten my head over the years that, oh, you need to <laughs> be on social media. So now <laughs> I, I am you know, putting my foot forward and trying to get myself out there. But um, uh, Instagram and LinkedIn, those are the two platforms that I am most active on now. Um, so my, it's I am Craig Martin mm. and for my Instagram and LinkedIn, it's you know, Craig Martin. Most times uh, people say they have to put in Craig Martin coach or consultant because there's a whole lot of great there, there, there. there. There's a few. There's a few. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a whole lot. So most time, <laughs> you know, you know, people reach out and say, hey, I, I had to put in consultant or coach to see you pop up. So, <laughs> you know, but um, anyone can connect with me on, on any one of those platforms and, you know, can reach out to said I, the group coaching platform hmm. that's acclimatedminds.com okay. and that's something that i i just get started and in an effort to try reach you know wider network of entrepreneurs you know some entrepreneurs sometimes say, oh, they, they, they would like to get coaching and mentorship but you're starting out sometimes it's a little bit 
out of their reach cost wise. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that was a motivation behind that. And also, the acclimated minds is the journey that I, I took to arrive where I am today. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I worked with some great mentors, some coaches and stuff. So that is just embodying that process, those people. Hmm. So that, that's where the, the acclimated mind, minds. Minds. <laughs> yeah, it, Excellent. It, minds with an S. Yeah, so that, <laughs> that, that's where it came from. Excellent. And I'll I'll make sure that the links are in the show notes to this episode and all, all that usual stuff so people won't have any trouble finding you. I'll put the links directly in there so they don't have to search. <laughs> uh, that'll make it great. Yeah. Um, Craig, this has been, I've, I've really enjoyed this conversation. I really, I can tell I want to, the kind of conversation I want to have with you, I want to slow down a little bit. And really, because like, obviously, this is a short form podcast. And so I'm always trying to make sure we're getting getting through things well, in a timely fashion. But I can feel like the like the way in which you engage with the world and the way you express yourself. I feel like I just want to settle in with you. So I, I might just have to have you back for a little a little a little slow pod in a, in a few months. And we can keep this kind of conversation going. <laughs> just reach out to let me know. <laughs> we, we're good. <laughs> that sounds great. And to the audience, you know what to do next. You'll probably hear Craig again on this very podcast feed sometime in the not too distant future. Um, you know where to find him. Links will be in the show notes and we will get a chance to talk to you again here very soon.